This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 482 uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA. A wonderful beach view as the train rolls by, uh, ready to talk tech with you guys. Uh, we got we got a fun one here tonight. First of all, coming at us from, let me see which camera I put him on. There he is from Studio D, Studio C. Wait, which is it? Studio C in the it's, D of Dormont. Yes, John yes. Which camera am I? Which camera? Are, which camera are you? I hope you know which camera you are. You're, it's your studio. No, but I mean, I meant on your board. Oh, okay. do I get a number or a letter? You're in number three. Number three. No, yeah, yeah. Your studio, studio C's on number three. Uh, how you doing? Uh, the gadget guru over a big bank in international, or uh, uh, Professor Techie Pants, or whatever I called you last week. <laughs> I got to go back and look because I can't remember what you called me. You're now. gonna get a new one every week. That works for me. So, uh, but anyways, uh, welcome, good sir. Um, and also, we have a returning guest. It's been a while it has since been we've a had. I know it's been since we've moved up here to the studio. Yes. But Marta of Marta on the Move back in studio with us. Back. Yeah. Welcome. Um, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now you've had a lot of stuff going on. I want to. We'll get to in a little bit here. Go for it. So. She's been in the new studio. Yes. Yeah, no, I said she has been in the okay. new studio. No, I had somebody on uh, one of the wrestling shows last week, and they're like, he's like, dude, I haven't been here since like you were in the basement. And I'm like, well, that was a while ago. Okay. Uh, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check out everything on awesomecast.com. You can uh, hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, tweet us at awesomecast. What show is this? Yes. Uh, awesomecast on your Facebook and your Facebook group. A lot of great conversation going on over on the Facebook group and a few stories that we put in through, um, uh, put in, uh, uh, to the show, uh, throughout the week as well. It's a fun one that Doug put in, uh, that I can't show you cause I don't want to get a takedown notice, but anyways, we'll talk about that. And also you can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app. Look for uh, awesome cast tech, uh, uh, banter pittsburgh and uh, you'll find us real quick there and uh please uh rate us and uh, share us uh and, and follow us on instagram uh youtube also you have video versions on there because i understand some people do not facebook and this is a problem with the other show where they're like hey i can't join you live well guess what if you're joining us at somewhere we are live on multiple locations uh on our youtube on our on the sorgatron media twitch on Twitter for uh, and for Sorgatron uh, Media and Awesome Cast, uh, so you can join us over there. Of course, the main chat room that we're paying attention to is over on the Awesome Cast. But if you tweet us uh, at Awesome Cast, we'll see a pop up there, and we can get you in in line there too. And uh, pro- producer Missy will send me a message that I'm missing you, uh, so uh, she's hanging out here as well. How you doing back there, producer Missy? She's she's <laughs> just saying hello. She's just okay. <laughs> but anyways, um. You can also uh, do, 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 say join us, like we said, every uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you're catching us later later uh, on social media, please use the hashtag AC482. Um, and you can also, thanks to our streaming partners, our audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com, streaming us every day at noon, and our friends at Post Industrial Audio, postindustrial.com, uh, sharing some great, some fine Pittsburgh podcasts. Uh, throughout the week there. So thank you to both of those for their support. And thank you, Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Our friends at the Coffee Club level, uh, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. And our friends at the Fan of the Show level, uh, Dutter's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, and the longest-running Patreon supporter on the show, and our friends at PGHMuseums.org. Uh, you guys can support the show, too, at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. So it's time for your awesome things of the week. Let's start with Marta because Marta's got a lot going on. That we she's got a lot of awesome going on herself. <laughs> so uh, let's let's talk about that. So Marta, what's what's happening? Uh, I got a, I I left 
I left the house in the evening in February. Oh yeah, yeah. So you got me. You got me out of the house, <laughs> which is which is a rare. Well, we picked a 50, 50 degree day for you yeah. to do it at least. Thank you. A Thank wonderfully you rainy and dreary Pittsburgh, classic Pittsburgh day. Apparently. Thank you. Yeah, I need that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been just uh, working on some fun projects for the past year. Um, we got our Airbnb up and running last year uh, and we i turned it into an art gra- art gallery to showcase different artists around pittsburgh for travelers and locals coming in so mm-hmm. that they can really sit with some artwork so that was fun um and i started up my libation store and uh yeah got a yoga certification <laughs> it was a fun <laughs> year it was it was it was it was kind of a crazy year last year and now i'm just going through trying to get everything like organized awesome so, t- so tell me well first tell me about the libation tour how did this kind of come about for you so i i mean i'm a traveler i love to travel um and everywhere i travel the first thing that i do is find a local or someone to take me around to their town of where they live like getting to know it and i've lived here my entire life and i thought to myself oh my goodness why why aren't I doing this because I have people that stay in the Airbnbs and they ask me where to go Mm -hmm. and I enjoy meeting new people anyway so um and I like drinking (laughs) it all comes together yeah it, it just all fuses together perfectly um plus I work in food service I've been working in food service for 17 years with my family food service company so i know like the best places to eat and dine and and see around town so uh i share pittsburgh history with people prohibition history and rebellion history and then we play some games and there's prizes and um drinks and tastings and it's it's a lot of fun it's a great way for people to come together Mm -hmm. and uh get to know pittsburgh and their premier leaders in spirits and wine and beer it's a good time this has been uh, more of these kind of uh, uh personal tours seem to be I um uh, our friend friend of the show chris whitlatch has been doing like pittsburgh and Torius and and tours like that of like you know ar- around downtown pittsburgh of like things that aren't there and and the old uh the old uh, uh organized crime side and everything like oh, that yeah so so like like uh, i like that, that that and i know airbnb you know i don't know if it's still strong over there but i remember there's just these experiences Yes. That have been popping up there. Yeah, I, I started hosting a couple different experiences. Um, I actually host a game night experience just to get people out of their shell and mm-hmm. to meet strangers <laughs> and, <laughs> and to have an excuse to play games because mm-hmm. we don't have kids and we can't force them to play games with us. Um, and it's hard to organize a game night. And then we do a cooking class as well as an experience to share recipes that we've found from around the world. It's fun. It's a, it's a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It's so, fun. So, so among the the multitude of things that you're working on, <laughs> um, you also have uh, what, what you described in your text as a as a as a Airbnb art gallery. Yes. So tell me about this. Um, so I bought a duplex around 13 years ago now. That it's terrifying. And <laughs> to get out of my parents' house, and it was a it was a piece of shit. It was terrible. Can I swear on this show? Yes. Okay. Great. Shit. <laughs> um, and. I rented it, wanted to see if anybody would be interested in coming to Crafton, of all places. And Not um, what you think of when you say, I need to stop in the city and, not and really. do that kind of thing. Yeah, not even a little bit. No. But surprisingly, uh, I convinced my husband to turn it into an Airbnb and to meet pretty much meet new people coming in and out of the city. And it d- did really well. So we bought another place in in the North Shore where you can walk to like the casino and the stadiums and turn that into an Airbnb. But I'm I'm definitely a person that wants to give a full experience to people. I feel like I don't give enough if I'm hosting an event or anything like that. I get really paranoid about that. Um, so I wanted to turn it into an art gallery to feature all the awesome people that I talk to on my podcast, Mm -hmm. Um, like movers and shakers in Pittsburgh, a lot of the artists. And so that came together and it took a while. It was, it was a lot of work and now I'm going to turn it into an audio installation as well. So you can walk through to each, um, painting, uh, or mixed media like photography and, 
click on a link and you'll get to hear an interview with that person or hear a short story that's made up about the piece that's a local author or um, a musician. Um, and then people can link back and figure out if they want to find that person on their own, like where they're playing around town. Basically just an effort for travelers that come into town to get to know mm -hmm. Pittsburgh based talent, like where they can find them, where they can go out and like visit them and show more showcase more. So this is, so th this is, so you started with just a, f a flat, just this is yeah. an Airbnb, <laughs> learn that process. And like, it's like, okay, what more can we do with this? Yeah, like, what? How nerdy can we get with this? Essentially, <laughs> and my husband's just like, why, would, why, why? You, what? Like, we're it's fine, you know. If people are staying there, it's generating income. It's great. Mm -hmm, it's paying mm -hmm. off the mortgage, whatever. And I'm like, but I can't, I can't, like, because I travel all over the world and I stay in Airbnbs. And honest to God, if I checked into an airbnb that had this i would shit my pants mm -hmm. like i would mm -hmm. i'd be like oh my goodness this is this is great this is a piece of the city that i get to see that i would never have seen um and i get to sit with it and i tell a story there's there's a lady that brought her daughter into the airbnb and it's my favorite story and she wrote it in the book um the guest book afterward that her daughter was on the fence about going to art school and after staying in the house and sitting with one particular piece, she uh, decided to go afterward. And I was like, huh. That's great. <laughs> it's, it's like, huh. Oh. That's great. <laughs> yeah, well, it's cute. I, well, I, and I know people that have like wanted to come to art school and then like the city scared them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that seems like it's a nice kind of like introductory, introductory thing. Yeah. So. It's really sweet. And there's some incredible artists there. Uh, George. Joyce Wary Perry, um, Kara Lavorio, Jeff Swenson, Stephanie Strasberg, Rob Larson, Larry Gioa. Uh, I know I'm missing like 80 billion people, Joe Groom. Um, and they're wonderful like friends too. So mm -hmm. to be able to support them um, and give something back with each other is really, it's really nice. It's like everything's coming together. And, and, you said, and, and these are all people <laughs> that have been featured on your podcast as well. In one way or another, like, you know, um, either they've been on the show or I take like painting lessons from them or, you know, they've shot my wedding you know, and mm -hmm. like, or they're really good friends. So yeah, it's lovely. That's awesome. It that, is. It's fun. That's really cool. It's a project. I like projects. Uh, chill. I don't know if you're seeing some of the pictures from this, from the, the links in there. Yeah, I'm seeing, I, I actually clicked, click through the rooms and whatnot that's super cool and it seems this is kind of the direction people are going when it comes to airbnb i'm seeing a lot more of the experience based airbnbs as well i know we know a tiny house person i, I saw an airbnb that was staying in an airstream um i've seen oh, I, I know I, someone I, that was trying to work on a houseboat i i, um, I, I did, oh, yeah, I, I did one of those boats. yeah i did one of those where it was a camper up on lake erie uh like an old 80s camper vintage oh, they called it really? yeah that's yes. pretty see that that's was pretty cool i love that what i've found um it at, it is getting super populated and i hate that there's so many places now they just feel like hotels yeah and that's yeah. not the point like that's like i go i go because i want to experience someone's life or you know like culturally different traditions how they decorate their house you know mm -hmm, and i go home mm -hmm. and i'm like ooh, maybe you know um but there's few and there's so many different places nowadays um that are just like cookie cutter and i or I like me it. i had a i had an encounter with a roomba <laughs> did you really <laughs> Yeah, there was a video. I stayed in Texas a couple years ago, and uh, it, it, it was it was like I heard the sound. I'm like, what is that? And I was like, oh no, it's a room, but it's coming up the hallway. It's coming right for me. Oh my god! <laughs> and then at one point, I let it into the room, and at I was like, I was like, it has invaded. At what point of the uh, day or evening was this? It wasn't like in the middle of the night, was this it? This was like terrifying. this is probably mid morning because I was probably I was in for a wedding, so it was probably <laughs> uh, I was probably recovering from that. Uh, mm. and, 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 and my, uh, my hosts were gone for the day. So, mm. and, uh, in, in the Dallas area, but, uh, so, <laughs> but no, th those are always fun because, you know, there's that, there's the camper, there's, you know, just, or just somebody's spare room in, in, in an apartment, you yeah. know, I, I would stay with the private room. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's something where like, 
uh, the one lady, she was a photographer and just like had her kid on the weekends or something. And so there was, there'd be a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. You it's know, wonderful. Not, not the full on kind of gallery treatment like this, but still just a lot of interesting stuff or just like, what do they have with the kid on the wall? You know, like there was a, there was a little Captain America thing on the wall and it was, it was kind of fun to see that kind of, kind of thing that have that kind of drop in like yeah. that. So my husband won't, won't let us do that. Won't let me do the private room mm-hmm. yet. He's like, he's like, that's a little close for comfort. Um, I'm traveling for six months next year for my 40th birthday. And, and I, I, I totally plan to do like a ton of private rooms, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. much to my parents, probably hatred. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, no, it's a different check in. You, you have to be ready for it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to, to kind of do that situation and, 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 you know, live in with somebody for a couple of days like that. So, yeah. um, but Hey, it, it's cool that there's like kind of that shared experience thing going on. Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So I don't know if you've seen this, but someone has created a rotary cell phone. Oh, so we've dear. gone, we've gone, we've <laughs> gone back, we've gone back to the flip phones, um, and now we've gone even further back to the rotary phone. Full circle, if you will. This has gotten such a big following that the person oh, no. Justine oh, hopped no. from the Brookhaven National Lab has now offered a DIY kit. And when, when I first saw this article, it was marked that it was $240. (laughs) I'm guessing due to popular demand and the ability to source things at scale, it's now down to $170. Hmm. Now that $170 only gets you a cell phone based main board, the 3d printed enclosure and buttons and the instructions to put it together. You then have to go source a rotary dial, um, an Adafruit uh, board, another breakout board, um, an e-paper display, a battery, an antenna. So you're still, you're still, you're probably, I'm guessing into this thing for at least, 300 bucks by I do the like, time you it, it's e-paper but it is a rotary phone with a digital display with yes that wraps around by the way i don't get it, it <clears throat> and, and i apologize because i can't hear the other mic so i apologize if i'm oh, talking it, over marta uh, yeah. it might it might have it might have popped again um it, uh, marta you, you're you're of the same age as me you grew up on rotary oh, yeah, right absolutely but i don't get i I don't get why you want it in a cell phone. Like there's a reason why those faces were really big and they use like a pencil to, mm-hmm. to turn the numbers. I would love my dream for my Airbnbs or actually our house is to have a rotary phone upstairs and one downstairs like a bat cave. Mm-hmm. But I don't want it on my cell phone. <laughs> Good luck on a 911 call on that. That is, um, I mean, that, that that is a, you know, um, that's your talking piece. Like much like I remember the old podcast when the first person came in with an iPhone, you're the one that rolls into to you know wherever and and you pull that thing out. <sighs> like hold on a second, listen. <laughs> I work with wrestling promoters <laughs> that still have flip phones. I believe that you know I'm I miss flip phones. Mm-hmm. I miss the days of flip phones. You're so simple. And it's just so simple. And you know what? It wasn't that long ago. It was it was like not that long ago. No, no. It uh, feels like it was, but it wasn't. And they were still prevalent for several years. Yeah. You know, because absolutely. not everybody, it wasn't so easy and cheap to get a s- smartphone, Android, whatever the case the may Blackberry. be. The everybody Blackberry. The Blackberry. The business people with their Blackberries, right, all self-important right. producer, texting. Producer Missy had, had uh, the first couple like slide phones, or not oh, first yeah. couple, but like the Windows slide phone mm-hmm. kind of ones. Um, the tilts and things like that before we went iPhone. So, um, I miss my old ringtone. It was, uh, it was like hash pipe by Weezer. It was like, (laughs) (laughs) but like digital, digital. Yes. Like, so it was my favorite, like MIDI versions of, yeah, it was like a Nintendo game, you know? Yeah. (laughs) It was perfect. It's what I wanted. Sometimes they didn't always hit the notes, right? Uh, It got a little clashy sometimes uh yeah no remember those days definitely remember those days um the the other thing i find funny about this is that 
the obviously it's it's not fully ready for prime time not that many people are going to be building this um the, the it's a physical battery switch that cuts power to from the main board to the actual battery pack mm-hmm. um there's oh so there's no ability to do an emergency power down um and the battery doesn't have its own protection cir- circuitry um and the battery will become Wait. extremely <laughs> volatile what <laughs> At, at 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 low it's a meltdown, yeah. At, at at low levels, um, there's also no battery or signal strength metering, <laughs> so you just have to make sure you charge it or power it off. Um, the good news is the thing lasts 24 hours on a single charge mm. with no problems. So that e paper and and no digital for the buttons. Yeah, I. Oof. 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 That's awful. Wait, wait, there's, there needs to be a rotary dial trainer for this for people yeah. that uh, for like. The but they're going to continue to uh, update the firmware. So oh, good. Mm. Yeah, Polaroid Instapic camera as a talking <laughs> point. Awesome, like buck a shot. <laughs> the rotary cell phone is not good. It just sounds terrible. Is, is that the one with the the smaller square ones? Yes. Yeah, it's somebody, I love it. I still have a couple of those floating around from when we were in the basement studio. It's so fun. Yeah. I make like so now I um. I, I take pictures and now we save them and we cut a little hole in them and we make like a Christmas tree with all of our friends and family at Christmas. Nice. Yeah, it's one way to like display them so you can actually look at them. Nice. Nerd. All right. My awesome thing of the week is, is, is the Sonic movie. And no, it was not a great movie. I'm excited to hear about this it when I saw it on the list. As okay, there's a, there's a, there's a role that comes out when I'm, we're talking movies with Chachi because his his qualifier is is it better than Detective Pikachu? Because Detective Pikachu to him is the best movie of all time. Oh my! So there's that. Um, it, it is not a Detective Pikachu, but they did it did beat Detective Pikachu in a uh, video game movie um, box office in the opening weekend. Hmm. So Sonic is up there. It is okay. It's Sonic. It's Sonic comes to Earth. There were points in this where I literally watched a scene in it, and I said, "This is Masters of the Universe." Oh, nice! Like the <laughs> Dolph Lundgren He Man, because there's always like, a, you know, we take the movie, we take the property instead of you having the movie in the world that the cartoon was about. What happens if Sonic comes to Earth? What happens when He Man comes to Earth? You know, I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bad movie trope uh when it comes to stuff like this um but it was fun was it how i want to know how is jim carrey jim carrey if you enjoy classic 90s jim carrey you are going to love this movie (laughs) i do well you know it's such a time some of those movies you you try and watch again and you're like this is too much i Mm. can't take it. oh no it's not full-on full movie jim carrey okay right but when the jim carrey scenes are um they let him go a oh, bit, nice. and it, there's some some interesting dance sequences. There's some interesting <laughs> gags with his henchmen. Um, so, I, you know, it, oh, okay. there's there's some there's, there's some fun stuff in there. Well, um, I think you're just going to hear that noise, right? Mm-hmm. That I you just want to hear the coin noise. You do, you do, do. Do they maximize on the coin noise? Um, they do, and the coins make or the the uh, the 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 rings make a, a are a big part of the of it because I mean you see they're yeah. like I don't remember the rings transporting you in the games. This is I guess they did at there the was, end. Yeah, you would transport mm-hmm. you to the three D yeah. the, the big version of it or something. I literally went home and played Sonic CD on my phone. <laughs> um, so and and got through several levels of that that I hadn't before. So that's that's how this did for me. Nice. But I mean it is it is something where, you know, Sonic's had good cartoons and everything over the years and 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 you know, the controversy. I love the stories that ca- that came out reminding us, "Hey, remember a year ago when Twitter bullied an entire movie studio into changing the look of a film?" Cuz remember the first trailer came out and Sonic looked weird. I don't remember this. He was this. super fuzzy. He didn't look like Sonic. They tried to make him look more like just a blue anamorphic hedgehog rather than just a CG Sonic. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And the studio apologized, put out a new version of the trailer with a new version of Sonic that we see today. And I went back and watched that original one. No, and it's just real strange. The eyes looked weird. The teeth look weird. You know, there's this whole, this whole thing with that. Um, I mean... That's uh, I, I'm sure that didn't change much of the movie itself, 
in the long run, other than that feel of Sonic, you know, being changed and everything. It was probably much easier for production value for them. Uh, yeah. Well, it was, uh, hopefully it was a matter of, hey, we just need to put the new Sonic model in here and just re-render all the scenes, right? I would <laughs> plug hope. And play. I, yeah, it's a plug-and-play <laughs> Sonic upgrade, right? It's a it's a bug fix yeah. in the long run. Chilla, you stepped away for a moment. We were talking about, hey, remember when uh, tw- uh, the internet bullied an entire movie studio and the changing Sonic? Yeah. Well, and what, they, Apple just probably lent them a couple of new Mac Pros and they <laughs> rack mounted them and called it a day. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's what I say. You just copy and paste. You'd be like, okay, you know, yeah. Well, I don't know if you covered it, and I apologize. I had to step away. Um, the it, It's now the number one, I don't mm-hmm. know if it's number one grossing already or just number one opening weekend video game movie of all time. Yes, I believe so. Because I think Detective Pikachu was the one before. I'm a little sad Mortal Kombat didn't make that. Uh, yeah, it was a different era, though. I know, but I still love it. Super Mario it. Brothers, the first one. The, oh. oh, don't do that to me. Don't do oh. that to me. That hurts. That hurts. Like Wazamo. Like, I, I accepted. <laughs> yeah. Like, as a, as a young Sorg, I accepted that as, like, I guess. But also, remember, like I said, Masters of the Universe, mm. I've seen what they do. Mm. I know I'm not getting full-on Mario as a movie, right? Just like, just like my He-Man. You know, what what surprised me is like I, I'll occasionally scroll to like the HBO upper channels where they show like a lot of the old movies. Like the recruits been on a lot. If you ever saw that the movie, recruit, wow. But they've but but they've been replaying. Oh, what was the one where the kids try to make it across the U.S. to the video game competition? The Wizard. The Wizard. The Wizard, the Wizard yeah, was so they've been replaying good. that. Like I've I've caught it like four times now okay, in the I'm last probably two weeks. I missed that. <laughs> I miss. I love that movie. That was one of my favorite. I'm sad I never picked up the DVD two pack. I always saw it with the Wizard and Cloak and Dagger. Oh, oh mm-hmm. Cloak and Dagger was a good one. Mm-hmm. Gotta bring those now back. I'm, I'm, I want to. Now I want to revisit it. I, I, we should do like a movie marathon at the studio with like I'm in. all Listen, kinds man, of I'm old there. school. I already need you guys to come over because I got these two copies for um, the Ewok movies. Ooh. And um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Oh, and I forgot to bring them in because I wanted to show you the hilarious thing. Because it was they completely, if you go look and you can look on Amazon for the two Ewoks movies. And you can tell, and these were released in like 2004. So it's not like they're super old. But it's like they took one Photoshop file. And if you had a two pack, you had the movie titles and the back and on the sides. And it looks like when they released them individually, they just turned off the layer for the other movie or oh something. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> like it's so lazy when you look at them, especially next to each other. And you can see the differences and how it's like, well, this goes here if this was the other movie. Um, so I haven't put them in yet because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get some people together to watch them with because I can't just sit there and watch these with my dog, although he is his name is Wicked. So. You can though. Sometimes that's the best way. <laughs> People just kind of get in the way of 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 like marathons for for things like yeah, that. Yeah, it just needs to go down. It just <laughs> needs to happen, I yeah. guess. So, um, anyways, hey, want to give a shout out to our good friends feeding our guests here, I, Marty? I don't think you grabbed a slice over there. Uh, our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Four locations: Beachview, Carnegie Park, uh, Carnegie East End, PNC Park. So I'm distracted because there's a. There's some police outside. They <laughs> came for can me. You, can you see what's happening down there? Is something? I saw them buzzing <laughs> yeah, by. I'm looking. We can Hold see on. them in the window. <laughs> yeah, they know I left my house. Oh no, that's, that's my. Uh, oh no, that's my paddy wagon. Um, but anyways, go check out our friend SliceOnBroadway.com with this uh, uh, police interstitial uh, in the middle oh, of it. Something's <laughs> going down at Los Palmas. Oh no! Oh no! Know. Probably another shoplifter. Yeah, that happens. Maybe they've been having a problem with that. Uh. Oh boy, I had the camera pointing the wrong way. We could be getting this whole thing. <laughs> Jeez, can you flip these? Flip you everything play around. By play. Yeah, let, me, let us know be, what's going you on. Could be the next episode of Cops. Nothing's happening yes. yet. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Nothing of Nothing interest. Yet. Just lights. Just a lot of lights. <laughs> All right. Hey, want to give a shout out to my buddy Chachi. He's got the game journey uh, going. Thegamejourney.com. He's playing a thousand games that you're supposed to play before you die, according to a book that he found one time. Uh, he is. I do love that he wrapped the Sega uh, segment because I kept seeing Sonic the Hedgehog pose from him. The 
as I was going to see the Sonic movie <laughs> opening weekend. Very smart, Chachi. I don't know if you planned that, but very, very wise. Uh, but no, he's heading into Nintendo handhelds right now. Uh, so and he's been going through. I think he's been through ninety some games. What has he completed all? Of them? Uh, no, no, no. He just he's just kind of playing, playing, playing and reviewing. Okay. You know, going through the whole thing. You know, he's like, well, I got to play these before yeah. I go. He's very judgmental about some of the picks. <laughs> so I would love to hear. It's very, it's very interesting. Also, it, he's been adding this feature since I suggested it, and he took all day and did it. Apparently, um, it, he now has. If you want to play these games, if they're on archive.org or if they're on goodoldgames.com or something, um, he has links so you can find them too. So if you want hmm. to like, hey, what is this random Sega Genesis game? If it's out there, he's finding them and making sure they get linked to it. So if you're a old, like kind of also want to play. All those games, he's gonna he's gonna help you find some opportunities to do that. Nice. So a really cool thing he's gone over going on going on over there. So I don't really want to toss this one on video in case it gives us a takedown notice, um, because but but um, Doug shared a Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland oh, in Back God. to the Future deep fake. Did you see this? Yes, and it it's is disturbing. It is disturbing. It is. I I kind of feel like it's awful. I it, it's so. It's too real. Yeah. It's too real. And I, it freaks me out that people can do that. So essentially, I, I was staring at it. And I'm like, what is, makes this so real? They're, and it's the shape of the face mm -hmm. is the exact, you know, is Doc Brown and Marty McFly. Um, it's the know, bodies, Michael too. Duflux. It's yeah. the bodies. But the shape of the face is the bodies and the bodies. It's mm -hmm. But then the eyebrows, the eyes, and around the mouth and the nose, they change just right in the middle. And it freaks me out. It was so <laughs> It was so uncanny. And it's it was the, so weird. It's the um, it's the scene where um, um, Doc and Marty are in the school mm -hmm. trying to discuss what's going on with the mom. And, and, and he suggests the dance and everything. Um, so it, it's that thing. And it is, it was like, I mean, it's still the voices and it's the mannerisms. And I feel like, like Robert Downey Jr. I feel like you've seen enough that you're like, I don't think those manner, I don't think that would be his Doc Brown if he was Doc Brown. I don't know. Mannerism. Like it, it feels, I don't know. he moves like Christopher Lloyd. He me. does move like Christopher Lloyd. And, and of course, Tom Holland, Michael J. Fox is spitting like those yeah. moves are Michael J. Fox, yeah, the hair, yeah. the nervous But hair I could thing. see Tom Holland doing it. <laughs> It took me oh. a second to be like, wait, is that his voice? No, that's no, 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 that's Michael J. Fox. Yeah, the Tom Hall, Tom Hall, it was pretty freaky. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, a little freaky. Julie, did you get a chance to see this yet? I did, I did, and I thought it was phenomenal, and it made me think instantly. You know, they could completely reboot the series with oh this, my but God. The, the the question I have is, when are deep fakes going to get good enough? So, so deep fakes, you pretty much just upload all of the images you can find of a person. And then it maps those on to the face of any video. What I want to know is when are we going to be able to upload massive amounts of audio, like voice clips, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it's going to modulate the voice frequencies Ooh. to also use their voice. I feel like that's been in process for a while, actually. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. I haven't seen any with with that kind of cape like, like the, that. Like there isn't there is a voice AI, and there's been things where they've resurrected like hey here's what um here's what uh, uh george orwell would sound like now doing this or something because they they are in and they are ingesting like our actors like that like this is all their audio clips and then like let's make him say this like that i know that was an Ooh. ai thing like years ago that they were they were working on so now you mix the two together no i mean plus like it's the a little um, dangerous the uh the 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 notorious obama clips uh, of him saying uh, d weird different stuff too uh, full on, but uh, it freaks me out. I I feel like uh, I want the the whole internet to crash. I want like, <laughs> before I, I want this the, happens, like the stand or so, you know, like the passage. I'm ready for just just shut it down. Has anybody seen the the, the end of Silicon Valley? It's kind of this thing mm -hmm. happened. So it's oh like, really? Yeah, keep going or not? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Spoiler alert. Um, hey, uh, no, this is the shout out portion of the show. Apparently, um, I want to give a shout out to a friend of the friend of the actually a friend of the Mayhem show, um, that we know from wrestling, Jordan Styles. He's also he is by the way a two time Emmy award winning um uh, video person at uh, WPXI. So so shout out to them there. I have to say that I, I think I'm legally obligated to say that. Uh, but he's he's working on a new series, a new web series called the Hurry Up Challenge, 
and apparently you can tell your story and and you can you you can put your your challenge video up for them on Facebook hurry up challenge over there and you can tell your story but you have how long you have to tell your story depends on how good you are at, at pinball <laughs> what you play pinball while you're telling the story i i'm i'm thinking this is kind of akin to like i'm going to interview you while we eat hot wings oh, wow. show that has been uh, pretty popular so uh yeah it's going to be it's going to be a pinball pinball story time apparently i like that the hurry up challenge it looks like it looks like they're up at our old friends at the uh uh kickback? pa pinball machine the up P- there oh i think maybe that could be it could be kickback i don't know actually yeah those doors in the back look a little different they look- so we'll confirm it definitely depends on the machine you're hitting up yeah you get to pick the machine <laughs> Yeah, I know. You oh, d- you do, but do you get to play it before you pick it? Because you know they have the different settings. Oh, you know? I hope you get a practice run at that before you go full on. Oof. That that Adams family that's su- like set to super fast is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> do I get the hard. trick machines from Replay FX? Yeah, like the uh, the the one where I, I hold the, the the tilt bar is on a helmet for Simpsons. And if you move your head, you you trigger the tilt. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy ones like that um, that they have a, a, in a row every year at Replay FX. So, <laughs> all right. Well, hey, let's get right into the stories here. Um, Chilla, what do you got in here? What do I got? Um, so, Redbox has a new streaming service that's yeah, free. Yeah, we were just talking about this before the show, and I heard about this. So, yeah, and I I, I read about it. I read about it quickly on the way home, or at least saw the the blurb, um, and then got to loop back to it this evening. I put also a link to the actual stream free live TV, um, which will take you to the actual app with kind of like a TV guide. They they do have apps in the the respective app stores of Google and Apple. Um, they don't think of this as you know new TV or anything like that. Um, there's a pet collective channel. There's a comedy channel. Um, old copies of unsolved mysteries. Mm-hmm. That now that's, um, that's tempting. So there's a whole channel, I think dedicated to America's funniest fails, which is like old America's funniest home videos. There's a USA Today and a TMZ channel. Um, the thing that I was interested in is there's two kids channels, K- Kabillion and Battery Pop. Mm. So this like, is very similar, Chilla, to Pluto TV. Because if you look through Pluto TV, oh, I thought that kangaroo was eating that dog's head. I did too. Okay, that was really worrisome <laughs> for a minute. Uh, geez, this just plays on here. Okay. I'm kind of afraid of what I'm going to throw in here. I said Dove now. Anyways, uh, so, but anyways, like the... Like Pluto TV has a lot of these. Like, hey, here's like Missy and I were were completely just watching like cat videos TV for like a half an hour one night because that's just <laughs> our brains were just at that point, right? Um, but it's also like you know, Unsolved Mysteries is on there, and I've been watching American Gladiators uh, Network, where it's just they're just playing episodes of American Gladiators, and right beside it is Baywatch, so they're just playing Baywatch. Nostalgic, <laughs> yeah, it's nostalgic. it's amazing. So it's like I and it's been that like. I just want to throw something on because I got like yeah. ten minutes to eat a sandwich, right? Okay, American Gladiators. What uh, what any era day are we week. in? And it includes the NBC ones with Hulk Hogan, oh. which I love because we interviewed some of those guys. Oh, that's um, awesome. But anyways, uh, some of the Gladiators from that. But uh, so, but yeah, I, that's what that was. What I thought was, and it looks like it's a more limited, like just getting off the ground Pluto TV to me, Chilla. So I haven't I haven't used that service, but yeah, I could I could see where you're coming at. I mean, I'm interested in just kind of sitting down and just kind of scrolling through and picking different things. Like right now on the Battery Pop, they're playing Minecraft tutorials, old Transformer tram, Transformers animated, um, mm. Shirley Temple. The friend I wouldn't mind watching the Forensics Files. I don't know. It, it, to Temple. your point, it's an easy way to kill. At least a couple minutes. It has the now this channel, which is that all those like news uh, uh, memes you always see on uh, uh, on Facebook, or at least I do. You know, you know algorithms and such. But uh, man from nowhere on hiya. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we got Hi-Yah really creative people. on that uh, that naming. Oh, it gets pretty bad. Like this is like this is like um, um, extended cable 
like <laughs> on steroids basically in the long run. So, but it, but it's great because it's free, right? It, it, it mm-hmm. it's free. Pluto's free. Pluto got bought by Verizon, I believe, and I think they're going to start integrating that into the service somehow, uh, because everything's turning into apps. So that makes a lot Everything. of sense. So. It's it it's interesting too because if you notice the times that things start, it's like seven sixteen to eight oh four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're literally just they're not readapting things. You know, Pluto does this too. Like if it's a movie, uh, or no, actually there's a wrestling chance. Impact Wrestling has it, and it's similar to what they put on Twitch. Um, it will just <clears> interrupt <throat> in the middle of the thing and say, "We're going to go to a commercial now." <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Okay, we were in the middle of a match, but okay, like not like you go to a commercial break on Monday Night Raw. It's just like and one, two, and let me tell you about this this medical Rough condition. Cut. <laughs> it's, it's it's like really just like boom inserted in there in kind of a lazy way, but oh, it's it's, it's hey, and it's a lot of old it's a lot of old content that I think people are not like I'm going to sell this to Netflix right yeah you know i do miss old content it's actually hard to find some of that stuff it is it's really like hard. the ewoks movies see mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's really like Voy- did you remember voyagers did you guys watch voyagers oh, yes. when you were a kid voyagers. i love that movie with oh movie. yeah Ethan okay Hawk. go ahead so oh wait no i think i'm thinking of the explorers oh no voyager so voyager was a pirate that time traveled with this small like pocket watch type thing and he had to travel through history and write things that were were wronged. What? Um, it it was kind of like a. How did I miss this quantum leap? It was like quantum leap, but but like fifteen years prior. Wow! Um, and on one of the, on one of the jumps, he accidentally jumped and picked up a kid. It's like a kid. The kid like You're stowed away on the jump. So now they're trying. He's he's jumping to try to get the kid back. Unlike Quantum Leap, where the guy was just trying to get back. Um, huh. But it never made it more than a season because the the main star, unfortunately, was I think died in a helicopter accident or plane accident. Um, at one point in time, I had actually found like a pirated copy Avoid of like the old recordings, but then I lost those. So. But it was it was it was a really good TV show, like in the I want to say mid eighties, oh, maybe, maybe so, late eighties. The there's a lot of those that were like um, um, syndicated. Yeah. So they really mm-hmm. they didn't really end up in. We're like we try to find uh, William Shatner's Tech War. Yeah, or something it's like hard. That. It's yeah. hard to find shows like that. Or uh, Night Rider two thousand or something. Oh, Night Rider. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I just I, what came to mind after you were talking about that was I wonder if Sliders is able to be found anywhere. No, I can't even find Sliders. The old Fox show. I don't remember that show. Uh, it was. Oh, oh, wait. They would slide wait, from dimension was it to like dimension. Right around the time of the X Files. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. I, le- wasn't least, it like back to back at some yeah. point? Like there was like sci-fi night X-Files. on Friday yes. or something. Yeah. You know. I loved X Files. I remember. I was just telling somebody. I remember getting in my Easter basket at home. Um, when they released the X Files and they put three episodes on a VHS tape. And I got those in my Easter basket. Ooh, they stretched three episodes on a VHS. Yeah, that was that like was. How many of been... VHS tapes did you have to collect for the <laughs> whole series? Yeah, I was like, uh, but I have. I think I still have them. I loved it. Oh, those are great. They always they always like a cop out when you find like like uh, I want to get the Transformers and like here's two episodes or even when I rented uh, stuff from from the old video store at home it was oh, like my favorite. Hey, here's here's a here's a Transformers tape and it has one episode. It's like that's 22 minutes. What are we doing here? That seems like a waste, and it probably cost twenty five bucks to buy that thing. So absolutely, I miss yeah. going to the rental stores. Yeah, those were the days. It was my favorite. We should just recreate a, a, a. It's coming back. It's gonna be like vinyl. It's gonna be like vinyl. There you go. There's there's still a family video in Queeropolis, which <laughs> which I frequent. Like I'll which go. The last family. Honestly, it's like the last blockbuster in like like Wyoming or something. Yeah, but, well, with like Disney Plus and all this, like we wanted yeah, to yeah. watch Aladdin and we couldn't find it. We didn't have Disney Plus. Mm. We had to rent it. <laughs> we, we went out and rented it. I was like, I want to see Aladdin. Dad, goddamn it! Let's make this happen. Yeah. 
Um, anyways, hey, we got a lot of stuff going on around here. Uh, also, you know, hey, this is Sorgatron Media, but also in these great walls is uh, a lot of work we do with Sidekick Media Services. Let's be the sidekick in your superhero project. A lot of great projects going coming up here. Uh, you can check out our social media and uh, Instagram over at SidekickMediaServices.com. A, a lot of stuff with SAE International gearing up for their um, uh, uh, collegiate design series this uh, this uh, uh, spring. Uh, already kicking off with some educational sessions. We've been having some fun work with them and on their podcast and everything. And uh, wherever we can fit in, uh, picking up some podcast duties for uh, uh, some companies around that needed, needed some uh, engineers. Uh, but what can we help you with? Websites, video production, podcasting, social media. Uh, check it all out at SidekickMediaServices.com. All right. Uh, what else do we have here in the stories? Um Chilla, by the way, we mentioned, I think, when Amanda was on last week about the um, uh, MacBook Pro Touch Bar apps mm -hmm. to have an app launcher. We did we did throw a link over there, although I see one of those is already dead. And I, and I don't think you're not using one of those, right? I don't think you do. No, I don't have a touch bar. You don't have a touch bar. That's right. I'm trying to. Uh, that's what that's what I think spawned the conversation was. Should I should I get the new 16 inch or should I wait for the refresh? Oh, 13 yeah, yeah. inch line because i'd rather have the 13 inch but i want the processor in the 16 the best thing for for the touch bar for me is is being able to adjust the volume or pause a podcast while <laughs> i'm working on something else yeah somebody talked to me about this touch bar thing it's fine i'm I, it's I'm, fine it's not a reason to get it i'm a person that doesn't update like I'm, I, I'm a person that's terrified of of new technology, oh. so it's great for me yeah. to come on yeah. the show. Yeah. So talk to me about this touch bar so, so, benefits, uh, disadvantages. It's there, I got weird because I was actually uh, I put up GeForce Now, and I was they one thing you can play for free is uh, Quake Two RTX because it has all the new effects for GeForce, and uh, it, so I'm pulling it up and I'm playing this thing, and I'm like, oh wait, how do I get rid of that? It pulls up like a, a mission dialogue, right? And it's like, click F1 to get rid of this. And I look uh. down and I'm like, where's the F1 key? And then I remembered you hit the FN key and it, it, it pops up in the digital screen. Oh, God, that's too like much it, to remember. It's like Final Fantasy. <laughs> what is this? But see, what they should do is they should be remapping and putting the... The whole point of the touch bar is to be able to give you a secondary touch display interface that's dynamic based on what you're doing. So mm -hmm. if you're in Photoshop and you're hovered over a color or whatever painting and you need... You, like it would have a quick button for the eyedropper you're, to switch no, colors. No, 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 no. Like you're, it, you're correct. Mm -hmm. You're correct. But also remember, I'm playing a game from 1999 but so <laughs> but you're playing Vampire it on the nvidia or what, what's the geforce, the geforce now? now yeah yeah so th they have a shell wrapped around that they could easily yes. map that whole touch bar yes. to be whatever the heck they want it to be I mean, really, I mean, honestly, and I don't see a lot of this, and it seems like the, the plugins. And by the way, to answer the question, the, the thing you're looking for is the touch switcher that will actually allow you to pull up your, your apps on the touch bar to open. Like, I can open Final Cut from the touch bar okay. instead of, like, you know, if you're one of those, oh, I got to pull. So I got two screens, right? And sometimes if I pull the mouse down, it doesn't pop up all my apps yeah. at the bottom. So it's like, well, it's just I hit the button here, and then and I open the thing. It's another input. For, for, for it's it's i barely i had honestly i thought like oh i'll use this thing for like final cut or something right yeah barely use it hmm. Other not than, even for scrubbing not even for scrubbing because uh, well, i mean a lot of times it's like two hour wrestling shows or our podcast so it's not as helpful it is helpful for trimming in quick time is it on all the new pros like can I still Most. get? There's, they still sell a 13 without it, I think. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. I'll be, I'll they call be, it the MacBook. Hold Escape. it for me, Matt at Best Buy. <laughs> my friend Matt Capinis <laughs> at Best Buy is like my longest running online friend. Hold one for me, please. Yeah, Stop. yeah. Uh, anyways, so I wanted to give that call back there uh, since we did bring it up last week and that was brought back up too. So what else do we have here? Hey, you know, let's stay on gaming for a moment. Uh, just just a quick update since we're talking about cloud gaming. Uh, I signed up and did not get my code yet uh, because there was only 10,000 uh, people available to do this. But um, the uh, Microsoft X Cloud, which is Xbox in the cloud, 
has been uh, the beta is still going. My brother's been playing it. Jealous, jealous a little bit because he's playing. He's, he's got an Android phone. They've been open for a while, but they just added iOS to it, so you can sign up, get on your waiting list, and are using Test Flight because of an. And and, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, Chilla. Because of some of the agreements for Apple App Store, they can only do. They are only providing the Halo Master Chief Collection in this beta. They call it a single game, but that's really a collection of multiple games. Um, and it's streaming at just 720 for the moment as they're getting started. I'm not sure why they would be stuck with that from the App Store perspective. I know why they're stuck to the 10,000 beta keys. And I also was not selected. So Son of a bitch. Well, I got GeForce now to play with in the meantime, and I keep finding more games I'm able to play. Though. None of my Warcraft games apparently now, but uh, I'm well, sure. Did you see it. Who, who was it? Um, was it EA? Who makes Overwatch? Um, Activision Blizzard. That's Blizzard. What, that's what I'm referring they, to. They pulled. They pulled their entire library. So GeForce now review. If you if you didn't catch it, it it's it's cloud gaming. You can log in with your Steam account or your Battle.net account and play it on a computer somewhere else. That's mm-hmm. definitely better than the computer that I'm running on. Except for maybe my MacBook, actually, actually, definitely better than my MacBook. Now I think of it too. Um, that's what I was playing Quake to, well, on was my MacBook, and I can't play Quake on. I guess you probably can't play Quake on the Mac because they just upgraded and killed support for all the 32-bit stuff. But anyways, um, so so, but but I can't play everything I have in Steam. It has to be optimized by the developer mm. and put on their server. So you're kind of stuck with what they have. It's a nice collection, and I have a lot of games on Steam, so it's kind of like I'm going to find something to play. Um, Activision was a part of it. A lot of their games were included, including Diablo, World of Warcraft, um, um, Overwatch, like you said. I think some Call of Duty games were included. And apparently it was a misunderstanding that Activision expected to have a commercial agreement when they came out of beta. They did not come to an official agreement out of beta commercially, and they were asked to pull the games. So there was suspicion that maybe this was an inside thing because they're using Google Cloud servers on their own stuff, and maybe they're going to go with Stadia or something like that, but uh, I don't know. I think it's just give it a couple weeks. I think in a month we're going to be like, yo, stuff's going to start popping up on there. So, But um, I I still think it's worthwhile, and and I've been having fun with that, playing a lot of... uh, uh, Rocket League. Trying to get controllers working on my on my Mac actually. Uh again. So anyways, other than that, uh I think that's all the video game stuff, right? Yes. Hey, Chilla, if you're worried about <laughs> your parents using Uber and they don't want to use the, the, the um the app, apparently they're rolling out a phone number for you. Wait for what's this for? I miss I missed the beginning part. So Uber is rolling out a oh, phone Uber. Number. Yeah, I do Uber phone numbers. Okay. Yes. So now this is a service. I, I'm familiar with this service like uh for the elderly. There were services that would do this for you. You call a call center and they basically arrange the Lyft or the Uber for you. Um the uh, what's what's the local transport service that the Access? hospitals use? Access? Yeah. Um, when I was driving Lyft, I would pick up, I don't think it was Access. I think it's another one. Isn't there like a mm, first, there is a, a first something. First, no, I wanted to say first responder. So <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dude, that's exactly what I was trying not but, to say. Yeah, I know. But yeah. that's exactly what it, it feels like. Yeah. Like first transport, yeah. first advantage, something like that either way, like I know I picked up people that I would pick them up from a UPMC doctor visit or something and it was paid for by insurance. Oh wow. That's like, great. So like these services have been there and this is the first time Uber has been like, Hey, we're going to start rolling it out ourselves. Good. Um, apparently starting in the Phoenix area, um, one eight eight three use Uber and but you you do have to have text messaging so all that information like your the car make and license number and name like in updates and it, your car is here is actually still going to come over text which already happens actually yeah, when you think about it, it does you're just taking the app out of it so that's so, pretty cool so uh, well, I mean it's like it's like yellow cab yeah. It's, it's They're dropping down to yellow back. cab status. Back yellow again. cab popped up to Uber status. Mm-hmm. It still doesn't come in an hour, in, the, in an hour for no. some reason. No. And you can't even get an ETA on where they are. No, it's you get nothing. Redi- I, I, I just I can't. It's like OG Twitter via text. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we can only we can only tell you we can we can only communicate with you your location in 140 characters, <laughs> so, yeah. which you legit have to because it is it's SMS. So. That, that's where the limitation was in the first place. 
Oh, what else do we got here, Chilla? We're about at that time. Half-Life is coming back in VR. I, I should probably have finished Half-Life 2. It's been 20 years. Uh, <laughs> so, Nintendo, I'm sad I'm going to miss this in my travels because this is actually um, this is going to be out before I go to any of the airports. Nintendo is going to host uh, Nintendo Switch lounges. I'm hoping because I saw that Seattle was on the list. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping I get to go back to Redmond for a Microsoft visit so I can see one of these soon. Yeah, I think it's in the Orlando airport, and I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm getting there uh, in time uh, by the time that, that... Why don't we just have them build one in the back of your studio? Yeah, you know what? Hey, so, hey Nintendo. Hey, Nintendo. <laughs> let's, um, let's talk. We got room. We got room to put a, a, a Switch lounge. People can hop off the tee, hop into the Switch. Hey, actually, there's a coffee shop uh, uh, opening uh, up here that would be a great lounge. We're playing some video games. That's a good idea. We need to talk to somebody about. Yeah, the coffee Pittsburgh shop. Airport also has lots of room. Yes, <laughs> lots of space. Lots of space. Yes. I tried pitching them. I'm like, you need a yoga and meditation room. Like mm-hmm. literally, you just need four walls and a floor, and uh, a video game space, and one of those minute suites mm-hmm. that you take naps. There's just unlimited room there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mix it up a little bit. Drives Come on. me nuts. Come on, innovation corridor mm. that you're trying to uh, put yourself over to be up there. Mm. 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 Anyways, uh, <laughs> I think that is enough. Unless, Chilla, there's anything else you want to touch on on the way out the door here? No, I think I'm good. I unfortunately do have a hard stop at eight. He's got a hard stop. He's got to get out of here. Uh, Marta, one more time. Where can people find out the awesome things that you're working on? I was lazy and put them all under Marta on the move. So it's hey, it's a brand. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not making another web page. I'm not. <laughs> um, it's all on Marta on the move.com, Twitter at I can't find Marta. Um, you can find all of it there. There you go. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. This was fun. John Chilla. Always fun. At Chilla on the Twitters. Yeah, Chilla. I'm trying to think what my TikTok is now. <laughs> Dude, I've been TikToking. <laughs> it's been great. I just been I just been remixing five seven nine on the TikToks five the chilla five seven nine make sure you follow I don't yep. think I follow you holy shit I need to take I think it's that. I think that's what it is you gotta check you out you know been, somehow I got locked out of my other TikTok accounts so. somebody won the bells I was been throwing music and effects over people like I put the we are the champions and rose petals following and stuff on him and and then he reshared it like I got wrestlers sharing my TikToks now I was like all right what's a TikTok all right I think we're gonna have an after dark with the Marta talking about TikTok uh, but anyway yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm John. I'm John Chichella on the TikToks. Oh, okay. There you go. Everybody, follow him. Follow him up there on the TikToks, um, and uh, of course, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, Sorgatron Media everywhere as well. So you can go check all out that all that stuff. Uh, I see my mom's in the chat room answering some of our questions. So, but it was how would you pay? Yeah, I don't. I didn't catch how you pay on the Uber. Um, um, you probably read your credit card over the phone. Chunky yeah. cheese tokens. I bet you do. What did you say? Tokens? <laughs> I just made it up. Chunky cheese tokens. Chunky <laughs> cheese tokens. Uber tokens. We're going, wait, we got to send you these in the mail. And then, anyways, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, producer <laughs> Missy. It's been uh, rocking the social media for us all night and uh, trying to make sense of this when I start to put the show up later. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for being in the chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.